Hey, this is Mark Goldberg from Mark Vlogs Watches and I am about to bring you a ridiculous video. The topic is just dumb and it is the ultimate first world problem. Um, however, hey, welcome to the world of watch collecting. It's filled with little conundrums, tiny OCD little problems, and um, let's face it, we're all a little crazy or we wouldn't be in this particular hobby where we can obsess on the, you know, the minutest of details. So the topic today is going to be the should I keep it watch. You know, I think we all have that one watch where we're just unsure. I like it, but I don't love it. Do I love it? Maybe I love it. Um, where you know, where you can't decide, does it really belong in your collection or not? But before we get in the meat and potatoes of this first world problem, let's have the quick wristwatch check. And today, guys, I am wearing a watch that I have no doubts about, <laughs> fortunately. This is the Polar Explorer. Um, I, I'm, I'm sure somewhere along the line I have done an unboxing uh, you know, video on it, and uh, I'll, I'll put it in the, a link to that in the description. Okay, so what's the watch for me? Mind you, I have sold off a bunch of watches recently. Um, and I, in fact, I wrote, uh, I did a video for you quite recently, how to sell watches on eBay. You know, I bought this on eBay. Buying on eBay is pretty easy. And I did a video on how to buy on eBay. And then I just did a video on how to sell on eBay, which that's a lot trickier. And I'll put links to those uh, videos in the, in the description here. But that's not really our topic today. Our topic is, what do you do with that one watch where you just can't make up your mind? And for me, this is that watch. And I really like this watch. This is a Breitling. It is the Breitling Avenger 2 GMT. Let me hold it up so that you guys can get a better look at it. Um, I'm going to tell you the things that I like about this watch and the things that I'm unsure of about the Breitling Avenger 2 GMT. But first, let me go ahead and get it on wrist. Okay, so here she is. Um, it, this is a handsome watch. So let me tell you the, the things that, that I like about it. Um, I like that, ha that it has a turnable bezel, which is the GMT bezel. And the way this bezel works is very much like the, um, like the Rolex one. This is not a 120 click bezel. It's a 24, so you've got two clicks per position. So it's a, it's a very good bezel compared to most dive watches that have just been turned into, uh, into GMT watches. So I like that. I like the size of it. I, you know, I don't remember if it's 42 millimeters or 43, so I'll put that here below um, when I'm done and I'll look it up. I do like the bracelet quite a bit. So, I, you know, I should say, so the bezel, I like the size, you know, of it. Um, as you guys know, I'm a little stuck on wrist presence. So I like a watch that has a little bit of, uh, hey, look at me to it. A lot of the Rolexes are um, much more refined in their look. You could see this one's, you know, this one's kind of shiny and this one is uh, matte or brush finish. So I feel like this is a classier looking watch in a way. But uh, nonetheless, this is still a rugged watch. I really like the, the crown. It's heavily knurled, sticks out well beyond the crown guards. It's just an obvious design element there. I like this bracelet quite a bit. It's, uh, it's all shiny. I like the clasp. Now, the, the Rolex has the easy link system that allows you to open and close uh, the link by five millimeters so you can kind of get a little bit of adjustment on it. But this has a system that I, I still like very much, which is the, um, you know, the, micro, the micro adjustments. Quick tip, never use a thumbtack. Never use a paper clip. That's what a lot of guys do. I only ever use like a, a, a toothpick, so you'll never scratch up the side of your watch. But it's, it makes for a very quick adjustment. Um, and what else do I like? I, I really like the dial. It looks a little blue in this light, but in actuality, there is a blue dial version of this, but this is the black dial. I think you're just seeing the results of the anti-reflective coating there. I really like the GMT hand, which is red tipped there. Um, and I don't know if you can see it, but the, the second hand is got a slight red tip to it also. 
you can see it as it crosses, you know, one of those stick markers. Uh, another thing that I like a whole lot about this watch is just the dial configuration. It's very clean, very simple, heavily loomed actually. So this puppy has loom, uh, which I really like. And you know, a lot of the GMT watches that you find on the market are not loomed as well as a dive watch. And this one isn't, but uh, because it's stick markers rather than round hour plots. However, it is still very well loomed. I'll put a loom shot for you at the very end of this video, so stay tuned, guys. And um, what else do I like about it? The, oh, the way the movement works, you know, on a, on a Rolex GMT, you can jump the hour hand. Um, and in this watch, you don't jump um, just the hour hand, you can actually jump the GMT hand, which um, is actually easier. It's technically, it's cheating, okay? This, which has a GMT function from Rolex, has an actual proper GMT movement in it. So it's a jumping hour hand. Um, but, but there is no quick set for the date, which is under the Cyclops there. You've got to jump the hour hand around you know, 12, 24 times in order to jump the date. This guy here has a modified, very heavily modified ETA. And then Breitling has gone ahead and regulated it and certified it as a chronometer. So it's very accurate. Um, but you can jump the GMT hand and you can jump the date. So this is actually, if it dies on you and you need to set it, uh, this is far easier to set than a Rolex Explorer 2 GMT function or even, you know, like a Rolex GMT Batman or Black Black Black, any of those. Uh, this is easier. It's cheating, but it's a, actually, I think, a really cool movement. Um, you can see that there are little tiny screws that uh, lock the bezel down, even though it's a turning bezel. And then look at the, look at the shape of it. And Breitling does much better case backs than Rolex. So that's a nicely engraved with, you know, some conversion tables, metric conversion tables on the back, whereas the Rolex is just real plain. Okay, that's the stuff that I really like about this watch. But guys, I don't know why I just rarely wear it. Every time I put this watch on, like right now I'm looking at it, you know, and I'm thinking, hmm, hmm, I should do this a whole lot and just like stare at this watch because it's really handsome. And in fact, I I'm gonna commit to wearing it for the rest of the day today. And if you know me, that's a lot, okay? Because I, A, I don't like to take off a Rolex and B, you know, it's a difficult commitment to me to wear a watch for an entire day, but here's the conundrum that I have with this watch, okay? Every time I put it on, I think, why don't I wear you more often? And I'll wear it for half a day or a day, and then I put it away, and I don't look at it again for weeks. Rarely does it call to me, you know? Whereas with the, uh, with the Polar Explorer, if I haven't worn this watch in a couple of days, I hear, the, I hear it singing, <laughs> you know, come to me, come, come. It's like uh, the Circe singing on the rocks, luring the ships in to their death. Um, you know, I'm, I'm having an Adricos moment here. But uh, like this watch will just speak to me. It will, it will call to me. If I put it in the safe, it doesn't last in the safe for more than a few days before I can hear it, <laughs> you know, off in the distance. Me, come to me. I miss you. I need you. This watch is mute. It is silent. If I put it away, I don't think about it and it doesn't think about me. Okay, so really, literally, there is nothing I dislike about this watch other than, I guess, it's not a Rolex, maybe? You know, I, I can't figure it out. I cannot figure it out. I even feel like it pleases my eyes. It, 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 it just works for me. It, it works for the configuration of my wrist. Look at that. I mean, that's a watch, guys. It's got water resistance. Um, it has 300 meters of water resistance. So this is a terrific watch to take on a trip because you can go right into the pool with it. If you're going into the soapy massage, you don't need to take it off. So you don't have to like leave it for, you know, for your date to like, you know, snatch it. Uh, you don't have to put it in your shoe at the Patong Beach. You can just take it right out into the ocean with you. Um, also, it tracks easily, not just two time zones. See, like this guy will easily track two time zones, okay? Um, the, the, the main hands of the watch are telling me local time, which right here is, uh, oh, about 12 minutes after the hour of 2 p.m. And then the, um, the GMT hand is right now in the same time zone. So that's why it's showing around 1400 hours. 
but I could set them for two different zones if I wanted to. And the same is true of here. I could be tracking a second time zone just by twisting uh, the GMT dial. But if you look, you'll see the inner chapter ring actually gives me like an entirely different GMT scale. And um, as long as I have this, I'm gonna take this off guys, or I'm gonna twist myself funny. Uh, but you'll notice there is a loom pip here at uh, 12 and on the bezel 2400 hours, but if I rotate it, okay, so now the um, GMT hand is pointing to 7 a.m. That's where I have it pointing to right now, um, on, on the outer bezel and then on the inner chapter ring, it's, uh, well, I don't have this watch set correctly, okay, so forgive me, I should have told you. The Rolex is set correctly. The, this guy, I just pulled it out of the safe. It's barely running. But you can see I'm tracking one time local, one time on the bezel, and then another time uh, the GMT hand to the inner chapter ring. That's really cool. Um, you just have to remember, <laughs> you know, which is which. So, um, but there is some factor missing, you know? Did you ever date somebody where you found that person attractive? Like every parameter, like all the boxes are, are ticked except for the one box at the very end of the list that says, makes my heart go pitter patter. Um, I, I wish it did, but it doesn't. Okay, I have rambled on long enough. So a couple questions that I wanna talk about in, in the comments, and then I'm gonna shoot a loom shot of this for you guys. Here are the questions. A, do you have anything in your collection where you're like, yeah, you know, if it went, maybe that would be okay. Um, but do you, like me, have fear? Like, I have fear that the second I let this go, I will fall in love and realize, what did I do? I let her go. I should have never let her go. And I, I have that fear. <coughs> so I have that fear and, you know, therefore I just like, I don't know whether to sell it. Quite frankly, I have this watch up on eBay right now, uh, but I'm not sure, you know, I really want to sell it. I think I, I think I might miss it. So do you have a watch where you're like, this checks all the boxes except for the pitter patter box? That's the first thing. And um, is there a way to get over it? You know, can you give me any advice on how I can fall in love with a box, or with, a, with a watch that theoretically ticks up all the boxes for me? I'm just having problems with that. I'm deeply in love. You know, I get butterflies in my stomach when I, when I put her on. I do, like every time I put it on, appreciate it, enjoy it. I like it and I always think, I wish I loved you more. Every time I look at her, I can't find anything wrong with you. I wish I loved you more. Am I just crazy? What do I do about this? Okay, tell me in the comments, I need your help. Like this video, subscribe, do all that stuff for me. Oh, and um, hey, my book is called Let Dogs Be Dogs. This is me, I'm the handsome one. This is for the dog lover in your life. As a gift, support this channel, buy the book, give it to a friend or read it yourself or both. So one of my Instagram followers, Seelord6524, has bought my book and he took a picture of it, posted it on Instagram and tagged me. And here is Let Dogs Be Dogs with his beautiful German short hair pointer. On Instagram, I am Chicago underscore dog underscore trainer. So uh, hey, add me onto your Instagram and send me a picture of your dog with my book. And hey, I'll feature your puppy in one of these videos. Well, here you are getting a look at the GMT Avenger 2 Breitling in loom and you can see why i like it the second hand is not illuminated so what you're looking at here is the pip at 12 or 2400 hours and you're also looking at the illuminated gmt hand not quite sure why they illuminate that because you can't read the gmt time anyway but it has beautiful and strong loom I'm gonna make a concerted effort to fall more in love with this watch before I end up selling it and then regretting it. Guys, what do you think?